Smartphones that cost $800, $900, over $1,000 are always out here grabbing the spotlight, but there are tons of options in the market that get you most of what those top dogs offer, but at a fraction of the price. So in no particular order, here are my top five picks for smartphones that you can buy for under 500 bucks. Kicking off our list is the Google Pixel 7, hands down one of my favorite smartphones you can buy today. Now, I've tried every single phone on this list, and in my review of the Pixel 7, I found it to be very well-rounded, and it checked a lot of boxes. In the hands, it certainly feels premium with a matte aluminum frame that doesn't smudge or fingerprint, so it always looks its best. On that note, I think the white colorway is very sharp with the contrasting silver. Add on the flat glass on the front, and I'm really digging the profile here. Just mind the 90 hertz display. Other phones offer faster refresh rates at this price point, but personally, I'm okay with this and it looks great otherwise. Where the Pixel 7 really pays off is with the user experience and especially the cameras. Google's second iteration of its Tensor processor, the G2, paired with the company's interpretation of Android 13, aka Material U, strikes a good balance between function and form. Not only does it look simple and clean, but it's been quick, fluid, and consistent in my day-to-day -day use. Considering that Tensor G2 doesn't perform as well as the latest flagship chips from Apple and Qualcomm, the Pixel 7 shows that tight optimization between software and hardware can go a long way. Even better that Google's committed to supporting the Pixel 7 with five years of software updates. And the pictures from its 50 megapixel camera are amazing. This is all thanks to the processing chops Google adds in software. However, the real kicker is the price. Remember, the Pixel 7 is Google's flagship offering, retailing at an impressive 599 bucks. Of course, that's over our $500 budget, but why it's even on this list is that it's usually on sale for less than that. On the regular, I've been seeing it for 499 bucks, and it can even slip down to 450. Mind you, this is pricing in the US market, and for the record is how I'm basing this entire video. Sorry, international bros. You do it with an accent. Sorry, international bro. <laughs> <laughs> But regardless, when it comes to Android phones, the Pixel 7 hits hard. Now, if you're a blue bubble boy, the selection from the Apple camp doesn't offer you many options under 500 bucks. However, they do exist and are honestly worth considering, so long as you keep your expectations in check. If you're looking for a brand new phone, unopened, at retail, the third generation iPhone SE is your main choice, starting at 429 bucks. Going on pure looks alone, it certainly looks like an older iPhone, sharing its design with the 8. I like that it feels great in the hands. Shout out small phones, Austin. That That's just a shadow, dude. <laughs> iPhone 13 mini. It's a really good phone. It is, it's a very nice size. Size matters, friends. It even has a home button, but it also shares that same 4.7 inch 720p class LCD display from the iPhone 6, which feels very cramped to use. Also, given the small form factor, it doesn't have a big battery either. It's a shame because under the hood, this baby purrs. Rawr. No, stop Rawr. it. The 2022 iPhone SE runs an Apple A15 Bionic with four gigs of RAM, the same chip that powers that iPhone 13 in Austin's pocket and the base model iPhone 14. This means you get excellent performance for most tasks, including gaming, the long-term software support Apple's known for, and you even have a decent camera to boot. The 12 megapixel sensor and lens combo does leave more to be desired in sharpness and miss features like night mode for better low light performance. However, the processing still produces high quality photos and videos for this class of device. And it's also worth considering that most social media apps integrate the best with iOS. So if you're okay foregoing the compromises of the third gen iPhone SE, it's a solid mid-range choice. However, if you're willing to go on the used or refurbished routes, the iPhone 12 is in many ways more appealing. Brand new from Apple, the iPhone 12 retails for $600 and only with 64 gigs of storage. However, with a bit of searching through eBay or back market, you'll find plenty of iPhone 12s under our $500 price point. But what exactly are you getting? 
Compared to the SE, you'll be trading off some performance with a slightly older SoC, as well as some HDR performance on the camera, going down from Smart HDR4 to Smart HDR3. However, I'd argue in the real world, most people probably won't notice the difference and will even appreciate the extra creature comforts. More in tune with Apple's current iPhone designs, the 12 has that beautiful and sleek flat edge design, but also with the added benefit of a newer and bigger OLED screen compared to that iPhone SE. Not only is there plenty of usable space to type and navigate, but content looks brilliant with its accurate colors and HDR capabilities. Best of all, because the iPhone 12 is slightly larger than the SE, this means it has a larger battery. As far as quality of life goes, minimizing your time on the charger is always a good thing. For my money, this is absolutely the move if you're looking for an iPhone under 500 bucks. We offer good consumer advice. Oh, look at the time. It's S22 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the iPhone 12, if you don't mind dabbling in the used market, the Samsung Galaxy S22 is a fantastic option on the Android side of things. As Samsung's entry-level flagship from last year, it still offers plenty of performance with its Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, at least if you buy it here in the US. And it's also guaranteed four more years of security updates from Samsung, so you can be rest assured that it'll be supported for quite some time. You can be rest assured. You can be rest assured. No, you can rest assured. You're you're re you're you're resting. You're resting assured. Hey, you can be rest assured. <laughs> Sir, I'm gonna need you to be rest assured. This is rest assured. <laughs> Arrest. It runs Samsung's One UI, which in my opinion is one of the better Android iterations out the box. It also has very good cameras and probably the best screen you can buy at this price point. It's 1080p class, which is fine for a 6.1 inch display, but I especially love the 120 hertz refresh rate and then it gets pretty bright peaking at 1300 nits. I never took the time to talk about this phone on the channel, but it physically feels amazing in the hands as well. Just like the Pixel 7, it's one of the smaller flagships on the market, but this makes it especially easier to manage with one hand. I'd argue it's the perfect size, Austin. It's not mini size. It's the right size. Plus, against its bigger brother, the S22 Ultra, the flat glass on the screen looks and feels better than the rounded glass. In fact, Samsung clearly thought so as well because they flattened the screen's edge on the S23 Ultra. If you wanna know more about that phone, I made an entire review highlighting its pros and cons. Back on the vanilla S22, it was an okay phone when it retailed for $800, but I'm seeing many listings under 500 bucks, which is way more reasonable for these base flagships. To maximize your value, you'll want to take the time to search and find the best ones, especially for battery life and general condition, but otherwise, it's absolutely worth it. Before I get to the last of my top five smartphones under 500 bucks, I think some honorable mentions are in order. Right at the top of my short list is the Pixel 6a. Frequently on sale for 300 bucks, it's a steal that will leave you with extra money with our $500 budget. But if you have the extra cash to spend, I think the Pixel 7 will fare better in the long term. Next on my short list is the Nothing Phone 1 which I want to try purely to see if it lives up to all of the hype. I really can't weigh on it since I don't have one in the office here to test out. And the same goes for the newly announced Galaxy A54. I'd love to get my hands on with them, so let me know if you want to see a video. We'll try to get them in. Well, can't believe I caught that. This is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3. Now, most people expect foldables to be expensive and out of reach. However, if you're okay waiting a generation or two and letting other people soak up the depreciation, phones like the Z Flip 3 are attainable on the used and refurbished market for less than 500 bucks. I can already imagine the comments I'm gonna be getting, especially regarding long-term durability, screen creases, and whatever might have you. However, if you're looking for a unique option that breaks away from the generic rectangles out there, the Z Flip 3 is a very solid play. Ken, do you know that the Z Flip 3 on Amazon right now is $368.45? Yeah, I wrote the script. You know what's funny is that I haven't actually shopped from back market before, but you can buy one of the Z Flip 3s used from their top shelf for- 
$2,500. With a Snapdragon 888 SoC from 2021, as well as eight gigs of RAM, it has the chops for some multitasking and gaming. And you can buy with confidence knowing that Samsung's gonna support the phone for a little over three years. At this point, I've talked about foldables a lot on this channel, and personally, I like them. With the flip form factor, it's considerably easier to carry around with it basically being half the size of a normal smartphone, and you can take advantage of genuinely useful party tricks. The cover screen allows for easy selfies, and it can also stand on its own, making it easy to read articles, watch videos, take photos, and more. Yeah, like the way I'm using it right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. It's literally how <laughs> I use it for your script. Also, why are you on the floor? Floor game. That's how you know we're a humble company. The president's on the floor and everyone's on chairs. He's a man of the people or a man of the ground. I do wish the Z Flip 3 had a bigger battery. And I also think this phone gets a little toasty thanks to that Snapdragon chip. Not to mention that dreaded screen crease has improved a lot in the past year if you're comparing it to the Z Flip 4. So inevitably when the Flip 5 comes out in a few months, that might be worth picking up with a sort of discount. If you're curious about any of the phones I talked about in this video, I'll have links in the description. And let me know, what would you recommend for 500 bucks?